Hello everyone and welcome back to Juno New Origins where we have a new update. It says 1.0.8.0 in the corner, though the changelog said 1.0.7. Uh, but I was looking for anything to do with career stuff and especially the deadline times. And it said that it reduced the difference in deadline times between flyby, orbit and landing. But I don't know whether that's going in our direction or not. Of course, we don't want a reduction in deadline times, but reducing the difference in deadline times is a complicated thing. <laughs> so we'll have to see. Uh, we have a Nebra flyby. I have absolutely no... Uh, faith that we are going to actually do this in 600 days, but we might as well try. Um, I think the orbit, the amount of time it takes to get out there should be more than 600 days, even if you start at the right window. So that is my expectation that we're not going to make it, but if we do, it'll be good. Uh, other things, uh, I think going forward, what I'm going to do is avoid the interplanetary contracts anyway, because we have plenty of money. And we'll just pick up the other satellite contracts to fund our interplanetary missions because I think I'll have any enough money regardless. So, uh, Or we could do stuff in the Drew system like Luna stuff or Brigo stuff and that'll be... Brigo flyby for 625000 just not worth it. So, I mean, I could do it, but I mean, really? Uh, anyway, but let's focus on Nebra. Uh, if we take a look and uh, we'll restore this alpha just so we can see the planetary configuration, remind ourselves of where everything is. I have not calculated out the... Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it's in water. <laughs> I think it's 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 in the water. Okay, uh, but anyway, that'll be fine. Uh, we'll just have to get rid of it because we want more craft space, but um, Nebra is... I think it was uh, around... Tidos and Tidos, I'm assuming, is Jupiter. I haven't calculated out the correct. It's the innermost moon, uh, but I haven't calculated the correct windows. But I'm assuming that this is our Jupiter analog because just eyeballing it, uh, the difference between the Earth analog orbit Drew and the uh, celeral orbit, which is Mars. Look, makes this look like somewhere between. Uh, it's more like Jupiter. It could be Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, somewhere between them, but in any case, we should be looking at somewhere between 90 degrees and 105 degrees for the angle between Drew, the Sun, and our target. Right now, we're a little bit under 90 degrees, so it's not quite the right time, but it should be good enough. I don't think we gotta get out there in 600 days based on the transit time to Solero, uh, but I am not... I am not going to like go uh, try to do a transfer that is suboptimal. We are going to do optimal transfers, darn it. Uh, and I'm going to recover craft. Let's just destroy craft. Um, yeah, we, we will continue trying to do as close to home and transfers as possible. We are not going to misuse our rockets. <laughs> we are not going to spend extra Delta V. So there. Anyway, so this might be good enough. I don't anticipate needing a lander, but I do want more solar panelry. Um, we we decided that maybe I can attach them to the bottom. Could use fuel cells. That's another thing. Even the little RCS thrusters at the bottom are whoops did not want to do that are not covered by. See, those are the RCS thrusters, so they're not covered by the solar panels. Okay. Oh, gosh. Just thinking about it, I don't think I need extra Delta V beyond what this has. I'm amused by the sort of squareness of it. So I think we're going to run with it for as long as possible. But Jupiter orbit being five times away from the sun as Earth orbit, or in other words, we're assuming that that's the same relationship between Tudos and Drew, although I didn't, I could have looked at the numbers, but um, that means we get 25 times less solar input. So, but we don't really use that much power either. But there is a fuel cell. It's 15 kg. Okay, jet fuel. We have jet fuel? 
Um, Hydrolox, no, what do we have in this tank? Hydrolox, okay, Hydrolox. Well, a Hydrolox fuel cell sounds right. 24 watts when it's that size. Sound? Is it supposed to produce sound? How loud the part is. Oh, well, it's gonna be small. When I reduce power generation, it doesn't seem to do anything. Hundred grams per second. Twenty grams per second. Seven bucks though. Okay. Seven dollar fuel cells. Generating twenty-four watts. Doesn't hurt our Delta V much. Somebody had said that for small tanks, the Delta V is better with Carolox than with Mephalox or Hydrolox, so I'm just gonna quickly test that. Um, that uh, they said with the same mass, not with the same dens density, it's obvious, but uh, so same volume it should be. Uh, I'm gonna call this Block B. Fuel tank. And we're gonna go for a one ton tank. So pressure fed, and we'll minimize. Because we were saying that it's relevant to small things. So minimize vacuum, we're assuming. Um, and we want the one ton stage. Um, well, it's already 23 minutes. Um, we want to keep it minimal as the extreme case. So I'll make this smaller actually. We'll say a quarter ton stage. Well, that's close enough to a quarter of a ton. Uh, we're giving the Carolox the benefit here. And 3.54 kilometers per second. All right. Well, let's change it to Methlox first. So that was 3.54. And now we're looking for a quarter ton again. Well, even if we increase this to 251 kilograms, it is correct the Mephalox, uh, the Carolox outperforms the Mephalox in this case with the pressure fed engine. And we will uh, get the Hydrolox. And yep, the Hydrolox is even worse. So it looks like scaling things down, the best option is actually Carolox, which will come as a surprise, but <laughs> Uh, it certainly does for me. Um, I don't know if electric or anything else will make any difference. Uh, let's, let's say gas generator, just for the heck of it. Oh, that's 1.02 tons, 2.91 kilometers per second. Okay, that's just under 1 ton, 3.2 kilometers per second. And then with Mephalox, 1 ton, 3.14. So, yep. Yeah. Well, even with the gas generators, so we should be using Carolox all the way, basically. Uh, so, back to our saved craft. So right now, we've got Mephalox down there. Well, I mean, I'll use Mephalox down there. Uh, and there, but for our upper stages, because I haven't tested with the small, uh, with the larger stages yet. We will see. Let us uh, change. We don't really need lander legs here. Uh, why do we have lander legs here as well as up there? Well, so we have more Delta V now. Uh, what can I say? It's a strange little world we live in here. With the Carolox upper stage now. This isn't doing quite as much. Okay, we've omitted an entire stage and still end up with about the same Delta V, so it's probably a good deal. Getting a lot out of stage 2 here. I think we probably shouldn't tweak the engines. I'll deal with the low thrust weight ratio there. We get a lot of thrust weight ratio here anyway. So, yeah. We'll call this Block D now, and so we've implemented Carolox upper stages as our most efficient choice. Well, I mean, we could do ion engines or something like that, but we haven't explored that yet. So we will save. So, Cybot 
2419, you were correct about the small upper stages based on mass. Carolox is better, and I can only cry. But anyway, let us launch and see what happens. Other tidbits from Cybot were that uh, a wing with minimum thickness is very mass efficient, and that conic fuel tanks are very mass efficient, but uh, only if the top has zero radius, so a, a pokey cone. Um, we're at a much lower angle now. A normal Holman transfer means that we meet it over here. And I think it's saying that that's going to get there in 1.26 years. So when you figure out a normal Holman transfer, it's got to be many years to get over here, not 600 days. That's why I say that we wouldn't be able to make that deadline, even though we just picked up the contract. And it's not that far off the window, but we'll see. Okay, we have 10 kilometers per second to work with. Throttle up and launch. Oh, oh, stabilization, please. So apparently I can pin this and still see it on the map. Oh! Oh, hey, those solar panels went. Oh, shucks. Okay, I'm just gonna shut down for now. As I intend to... Um, coast a little bit. I don't know. I mean, we've got a six-minute stage. Um, I think we could probably start now. Now it's saying 84 seconds, so. Okay, we are in orbit. And we have 3.43 kilometers per second left in this stage. Usually for something as big as Tito's, we can make it work out. Because it's got a lot of gravity to suck us in. That is escape. How much delta V is that, by the way? It's only 1.59, so we're packing more than I need. And yeah, as expected, the Tiddos can perturb our orbit quite a lot. Um, the problem is, uh, again, we're going to get there too late like this, but that's because well, we really did time it badly. But 600 days is still not going to happen. <laughs> so 600 days is still not going to happen. But we uh, took this contract before the update. Okay, we don't want to be out of plane with the moons, though. So, actually being a little bit loose and then doing a mid-course correction to get the rest is okay. So, okay. What it says up here is, plan burn 278 days, that's the mid-course adjustment. Enter SOI 3.58 years and an exit SOI 4.95 years, so, yeah. Okay, so that's our combination of burns, and this stage can more than handle that. We are, because I'm not going to be fulfilling the contract, we're definitely out for tech points. So if we can, what we're going to do is we are going to make orbit around as many of these moons as possible. At least fly by them. Okay, burn time 2.5 minutes. Oh, flashy. Uh, we've got some flashy here. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, it says... Is it because of making an orbit out to Tidos or something? Oh, we're, we're, the flashy actually distracted me. <laughs> we're too close. Alright. Got distracted by the flashes. Timing's a bit off now. It's fine, Tiddos is big. Okay, well, it's saying that the Delta V is going up. Yep, okay, so let's just get rid of that. Okay, readjust the mid-course adjustment. Now, if you look at the Holman transfer, the most efficient normal transfer between planets, um, that would be from here to right here. Even with that, uh, even if we got the timing perfectly right, um, we're not getting there in 600 days <laughs> because uh, basically what you do, I mean, the way you can think about it is uh, 
you take a quarter of the target's orbit plus a quarter of the origin orbit, their duration, and then sum them up and that gives you an approximation. That's like a first level approximation. It's not exactly like that, but at least I'll give you a first level approximation of how long it's going to take. Okay, well, we're getting pretty close to it there. This one, uh, it says the approach is on this side this time, which is not bad, but we're going to take a lot extra to slow down, but I think we have that amount. I don't know which way around I'm going. <laughs> um, let's see. That would be a maneuver in four point. Okay, so we're going around clockwise then. This side, it's still, it's not faster. It's still four, uh, 3.5 years entry. So we're not going any faster. We're just going the wrong way around. Still don't know what that 2.48 years is supposed to try to tell me, but that's that approach info, 4.29 years is a whole other business. I guess that's after this plan burned, because it's not the closest approach at all, otherwise. Okay, so there... Well, that's a healthy distance still. I mean, that's further away than we might want, but... It depends on the atmosphere of Tiddos. It's still within the orbit of the target moon. I'll take that for now. We'll fix it when we get there. We're not going to take much to initially capture, because you can see it's perturbing our orbit quite a lot. Uh, it, so I'm not even going to need to check that, but uh, to pull it all the way down, it's going to take a little bit more. Whoa, that's color. Okay. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so we've got a mid-course adjustment, and we'll just time warp to that, making sure that we have the power. Okay, I think that should be good enough. It is still recharging. My main question here is the power, really. Um, Delta V I'm fairly confident in. Contract, obviously. <laughs> we knew ahead of time. I knew, I knew way ahead of time that that was just not going to work for us. Not if we're going to do things efficiently. Oh, battery is 0% now. Oops. You need to warn me about these things. Um, well, I think we just don't have, we're not going to have enough battery. So, I mean, uh, enough power under normal circumstances. I don't know if I can turn on the uh, fuel cell anymore. Where are, um, can we just click on the fuel cells? I should put the fuel cells on the previous stage. Oh, oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay. Fine, we're on this stage now. Now I'm marginally less sure about Delta V. <laughs> Still could be okay. Fuel tank. Fuel cell. Activate. It's making a sound. Fuel cell. Activate. Oh no, it's still Hydrolox powered. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I forgot to change the fuel when I changed the fuel. Well, shucks. 0.68 watts out here. And what's the probe core drain? 6 watts. Yeah, that's not going to survive, but I still have control right now. Um, why don't we try and contrive a flyby of the inner moon, even if it's without power? Uh, will I be able to see that? Well, it's not showing me the... the info about our approach in that view. Yeah, I'm used to being able to plan it by now, but I don't see any view that's going to let me 
planned and never approach. Well, uh, yeah, I think we'll just have to just go in and see what happens, but... On the right side, we'll get credit for the Tidus flyby, in theory. Oh, it's recharging now. Tidus flyby. We have discovered Tidus. We're going the right way around. But uh, we've lost power, so maybe we'll get 1% when I time warp a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's just a rounding error of some kind. Um, I don't know, maybe we should just try for that orbit directly. This is not efficient, but... Uh, I want to see how much it's going to cost. Okay, anyway... Um, right there is a flyby. That'll qualify. 1.18. And can we stage? Wait, we're still in time warp. Uh, we have stage, we have 2.49. So we can do the burn. Okay, where's Tidos? Nibra Tidos. Well, it's looking just about the way I expected it to look. <laughs> so the efficient thing to do would be to get close to Tidos and try and capture it out, cost less Delta V. And we could still pull the Apoapsis down as necessary to our target orbit, or keep it up and increase the periapsis to the target orbit. Lots of possibilities, but we're doing it like this because I uh, I don't know about the power situation really, uh, so might as well not mess with it too much. Alright, so... Honestly, I don't know how I'm controlling it at all with zero power, but I'm not complaining or anything. We're late on this burn, but it's not a super precise burn. We have made Tidos orbit. We could keep it loose and that would help our ability to correct our inclination with respect to things. But I don't want to hang out too long when we have zero battery. I have no idea when it's going to finally decide to kill me. One kill Newton thruster. The mightiest of all engines. Always. Oh, okay, let's just stop it right there. The fuel cell sound might be like I could do without, but we'll figure on that later. Another thing I don't want to... It might be saving us or something, I don't know. I um, the, the, the approach info here, I'm not supposed to trust, I think. I'm supposed to trust the one here, maybe? Now, now there's, there's a 392 there. Uh, now, now I'm only getting... Oh, no, I got a 397 and a 9000. Okay. Well, uh, something like that. <laughs> something like that. 241 is a lot. Okay, that's going up now. So what we see here is that after our approach, it's leaving us in an orbit that's sort of touching the orbit of the outer moon. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to try and make orbit around Nebra. We're going to try and hit the outer moon first. But yeah, we'll get the Nebra flyby. It's late. Okay, where's Nebra? Oh, okay, so the SOI entry is 9,000 kilometers. That's why it said approach info 9,000 kilometers. And no, that way we can't. It says 892 kilometers for the close approach actual. Let's test how much it would take to make orbit from this distance. Of course, we could get closer, but... As expected, not uh, too much. I didn't want to spend that much. Not what I wanted. 
fact, potentially, yeah, we don't even have enough, so. That's alright, we'll go around some other moons. Nebra, very plain looking. Possibly very cloudy. Okay, so now we're on another path and we want... I oh, can't click on that. Okay, what? which one are you <laughs> out there? Orcus! It's Orcus that we are somewhat tangent to out there. Okay, um, Orcus. That's fine. So up here, we'll do a minor adjustment. Oh, that's not very minor, is it? Maybe we should just wait. Well, here it seems to be getting closer. Still takes a bit. What we would like is for it to boost us to the next one. But it doesn't have enough gravity for that. Seems like it would take too much to get to orbit around it. So yeah, we're not going to do anything extra. And still get the flyby here. A loose flyby. Okay, so with this plotted. Up. Oh. We are past. Okay. Well, that's still the pass I wanted and close enough to inline with everything else. So, let's head for an encounter with this moon. What, what was it called again? Orbis. Orcus. Orcus. Um, I don't know why having 0% battery doesn't prevent me from having control. My apologies. <laughs> uh, I feel somewhat exploitative at this point. But we're not making any money out of it, so... But we are getting uh, tech points. There's that. Okay. Orcus looks like that. I even have the stability on, which I shouldn't have. Let me just turn that off. And there we go. Very sort of bimodal moon. Okay, so we flew by and we have one left. And we do need to target it. So that is Miros. We don't have much Delta V left. That would be too much. Well, we have the monopropellant though. Oh wait, uh, let's... Let's just do the first burn first. And we'll do some of it with the monopropellant to see if that helps. We're making sort of tangential encounters. Of course, we could have an incidental encounter like over here or over here, too. Those are options. But I'm trying to make them as neat as possible. It's interesting that the uh, gap between orbits is so much. When you consider that in uh, Juno space, the gap between the orbits... Uh, well, at least once when we were around Drew trying to make a transfer is actually sort of less... But, uh, yeah, it's all complicated. Okay, uh, let's turn. Ooh, much time warp. Uh, RCS is not going to provide a whole lot. Alright. Okay, I think that's all we needed. Alrighty, and then we can wait a little bit, I think. Please don't be in a resonant orbit. <laughs> Uh, it's sort of a resonant orbit. Just bringing that moon to us. We don't have a lot of delta V left, but I think we have enough. Oh, there we go. That'll be a flyby. 54 meters per second left plus some monopropellant. 
Okay, the SYF Miros. And there's Miros. Okay. And not very close, 2,291, but, you know, we're a little bit shy of Delta V at this point. And, yeah, so I will take it. So we clearly need, I mean, I think if I had actually packed the right fuel cells, it would have worked out better for us. Miros looks a lot like the moon. Like, our Earth's moon, at least from a distance. But, yeah. Clearly that was one big fault, uh, because I had changed the fuel in the tank about changing the fuel for the fuel cell, but yeah, that will have to be improved upon. Solar panel, I don't think the solar panels we have right now, we need extendable solar panels, big solar panels, in order to work out here. So yeah, we are no longer in the SOI of Miros, and I think we're done. So... We'll just save flight, save and exit for now. Alright, so we got plenty of tech points, but we didn't get much money. Well, we didn't get any money. And... Solero flyby, how long is it now? 400 days. Well, 400 days we can do for Solero, I think. I mean, let's not pick it up right now, <laughs> of course. Uh, we'll have to check that out. So, maybe now with the update, the contract timing is better. We'll see. Uh, the, the contract we just did was picked up in the previous update, so we'll have to reassess. So we'll see, we'll see. But we got our tour of Tidos's Moons, and with that I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.